I know, I know, I, I get it. Some of you may be thinking, if I watch another video on gun safety, it makes me want to puke. However, there's a big difference between memorizing the four universal gun safety rules and understanding them theoretically and being well-trained to apply them under pressure of a violent attack where everything is moving fast and you're operating on pure instinct. So no, this is not your run-of-the-mill gun safety video. So grab some popcorn and pay attention. Buttered popcorn or plain? The four universal safety rules pounded into us as gun owners for a reason. The same rules apply whenever you pick up a gun, be it at home, when you dry fire, at tactical range, and whether you carry a firearm everywhere or just intend to use it for home defense. It applies to real guns, BB guns, water guns, and Nerf guns. Yes, at close range, water and Nerf guns can take out an eye too, so no exceptions. Take it easy, man. Now let's dive in. Rule number one, always treat all firearms as if they are loaded. It isn't hard to find real life stories about people picking up a gun and shooting someone by accident. It even happens to people who are supposed to be professionally trained for hours on end. When later interviewed, every one of them says, I swear I thought it was unloaded. There is a reason it's the first rule on the list because adhering to it makes the other rules easy to follow. Oh, that's brilliant, Bumpkin. Regardless of whether you carry a live round in the chamber or not, the moment you pick up the gun or present it from a holster and point it at someone, it constitutes deadly force, even if you didn't fire a single shot. You can't be serious. It doesn't even matter what your intention is. You better be able to articulate to a jury why breaking this rule was reasonable and necessary. Rule number two, always point the firearm in a safe direction, or if you prefer, Never point a gun at anything or anyone you don't intend to destroy. Come on, man, you know I'm just joking, man. Not even as a joke. Not even if you're 100% certain the gun is unloaded. Well, because of rule number one. I know the rules, okay, now. If you dry fire at home, an outer wall is usually the safest place to point a gun at because it's usually made of concrete. If you live in a mobile or manufactured home, you ought to create a backstop of some sort that bullets cannot penetrate through. Even though you have no live ammunition where you practice, you want to play it safe. Safety first. Remember, guns don't kill people. Most ammunition can penetrate through drywall. If you have a firearm ready to go for home defense and you actually have to use it in self-defense, you better be well aware of which walls you can point and shoot at and who may be on the other side of that wall, especially if you have kids and or guests staying around the house. You may either not have time to think about it or will be too amped up to realize what's behind your attacker when the shots go off. Watch where you're shooting! If you carry in public and have to react to an attack, this point gets amplified because the likelihood is that there will be many more innocent bystanders around and the margin for error narrows exponentially. We'll speak more about that in rule number four. I can't wait. Rule number three, always keep your finger off the trigger. That is, until you have identified your target and you made a conscious decision to shoot. Until that time, your finger should be resting high up on the slide, not on the trigger guard. It's not that resting your trigger finger on the trigger guard is wrong. It's just not as safe, in my opinion. A self-defense situation is a high-stress event. Your adrenaline is pumping so high that if you get startled or spooked for any reason, your reaction and reflexes will be more extreme. If you're holding a gun, your trigger finger will likely curl as if trying to make a fist and go right for the trigger because there is nothing stopping it. That's how accidental shootings and discharges occur. I can't believe I never thought of that. Keeping your finger high up on the slide will not prevent the rest of your hand from clenching the gun tighter, but the slide will stop your trigger finger from wrapping around the trigger. So I recommend that you make it part of your training to place your trigger finger high up on the slide as you pick up the gun, release the trigger when you're done shooting, when you draw the gun from the holster, and when you reholster. No matter how many safeties your gun has, none beat the greatest safety of them all. Finger off the trigger. And you can take that to the bank. And last but not least, rule number four. Always know your target, what's in front of it, and what's beyond it. No self-defense incident is simple. You say that again. However, some may be more straightforward than others. For example, you're at home relaxing with a book. A masked intruder kicks in your door and enters. You grab your gun and confront him or her. There is no one else in the house. There is nothing between you and them. 
You shout commands for them to leave, they refuse, you shoot. Pretty straightforward. Or is it? Well, that depends. Did you use a pistol, rifle, or shotgun? What caliber did you use? Would the caliber penetrate and continue past the intruder? Was the front door still open after it was kicked open where the round could continue through and onto the street or a neighbor's home? That gives me a lot to think about. Now, a more complex scenario. You're at the mall, having a bite at the food court, and it is crowded. All of a sudden, a man enters the food court and starts spraying bullets at the crowd. People start panicking and running in every direction. You make the decision to eliminate the threat. You draw your gun from the holster and aim, but people keep running between you and the shooter as well as behind him. You can't get a clear shot. What do you do? I mean, come on, you're gonna kick ass and take names. There is no easy answer for this one, because if you hesitate, more people die. Maybe even you or a loved one with you. If you shoot and miss, where will that bullet land? If you hit the target, but the shooter keeps going, then what? How the hell should I know? A lot to consider in a split second, and ultimately, it will have to happen on autopilot. Your gun handling skills may be amazing, but if your mastery of the safety rules isn't spot on, you may save the day and still harm innocents. Some of you already know that and make it part of your training and decision-making process. We can't predict the fight we get. We can only try to prepare mentally, physically, and emotionally to deal with as many scenarios as we can in our training. What are you waiting for, rookie? Understanding how the safety rules play a part in every scenario we can think of and incorporating these rules into our training will play a significant part in the outcome of any scenario we may find ourselves in. Not only in surviving an attack, but also in our ability to win the legal fight that may follow. If you enjoy this video, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and watch the next video right here. Train hard, often, and safely, and I'll see you at the range.